How's it going everyone? Uh, it's been a while since I uploaded a Gunpla review on this channel. I am a little bit rusty so I do apologize. And today we are going to take a look at the Master Grade High New Gundam version Katoki. Alright, first off this kit does come with 26 runners, a huge water slide decal and a small sticker sheet. Now talking about this kit's frame, there's really not much details on it except for those pistons on the knees. It does look a lot like the Master Grade New Gundam Verkaz uh, frame, except that there's none of that cycle frame gimmicks on here, but you can still see the resemblance and the leftovers from the designs of it. Speaking of which, uh, most of these parts will get covered up by the armor parts anyway, so there's not really much of a complaint about it. And here he is with all the armor parts and decals put on and the armor parts are undergated so another cleanup is going to be straightforward except for some which are on weird places and you can see some of the armor parts like that thruster right there on the back and here on the shoulder parts are off white on these uh, fin funnel sections here on the middle that is also a uh, off-white I just painted it gray just because I wanted it to pop out more when I uh, put in the LEDs on it I also took the liberty of painting that big beak uh, thruster thingy on the back with some metallic gray so it just pops out more in pictures and also behind this backpack is this huge fuel thruster which you can pretty much move up and down and back here on the legs uh, this is pretty much the only thing that's going to be seen uh, in the inner frame so you can take the liberty of painting it I didn't personally and over here you see more thrusters underneath hidden under the armor and also over here with the uh, hatch opening gimmicks to reveal another thruster belt in there and underneath the feet here these painted parts are raised so you can do a better job of masking them and painting them uh, I did a pretty crap job on it but it wasn't even going to show on the pictures it's just a preference for me and on the front those uh, two vents on the chest and the V on the waist were yellow uh, over here on the knee you see those pistons again uh, those were gray and I just painted them silver and gold just to make it pop in the pictures. Uh, the forearms on the right and left are asymmetrical and they do hide a uh, gimmick. So I'll show you that later. And moving over to the head, the eyes and the sensor up top is a clear green plastic. I just took the liberty of painting the top sensor with clear blue and leaving the eyes green and putting in some blue LEDs. Now moving on to the articulation, I did remove the backpack just to make it easier to move. Alright, now the head goes up that much and you'd see the white portion of the armor moving, but not too much like the new Gundams. You can move its head to the right, but it's uh, blocked by the colors. Same with the left. And over here, there is no ab crunch because it is like one big piece and it's being uh, supported by that tiny piece of plastic on the bag, which I'll show you later. Uh, over here on the shoulders, can do a 360, but it's not going to be able to do that if it has the backpack on a little uh, side uh, crunch on the abs. Uh, you do have a 360 over here by the bicep and deltoid connection. And over here uh, on the shoulder, I'm pretty sure the new Gundam is the first one to have that joint. Uh, it retains it here on the high new, and you can have the arms reach in front. And then on the shoulder armor, it does move up and down. And then does have a full elbow bend, which is really tight on mine since mine is painted. And over on the wrist, you do have a separate wrist uh, joint from your uh, manipulator. 
can see there it can move up and down a little bit left and right as well and it showed that i don't know why and yeah uh fingers are 3.0 style fingers or hands uh individually articulated so it is pretty hard to close it up all the way without popping the fingers i know there's an instruction over on the manual on how to do that but i can't do it and the pinky keeps popping off so just be careful with the fingers popping off of your kit all right wrist can extend that much as well and over here the front skirt does go up just like that and you'll see here that the hip placement is different from the new gundams and over here you can pull the front skirt off the side the side skirts do move a little bit uh, up and down a little side to side but it's supposed to be behind the back skirt right there so yeah it can move almost in a 360 without hitting that shoulder and there it goes it just pops out so be careful with it and by the way these are model kits so the way that i handle them don't don't do that <laughs> over here the back skirt does go up just like that and it hits the back portion right there goes off to the side just like that and for the hips if you move the front skirt up you can flex the hips forward you can get more out of it if you move the knee armor out of the way and over here in the back you do get that much hip extension but the back skirt is gonna hit the calf section of the leg so if you move it to the side you can get that much high up now you do also get some hip abduction uh, by that much the side skirts are pretty huge or long i should say and yeah there you go you do get a full knee bend and over here by the ankles you do get that much flexion on it and this much extension and you get this much inversion on the ankle and this much e version on it uh, not a whole lot but uh the hips the hips do go on a 360 but on this angle it can't because it's gonna hit that hip section and the hips are on an angle anyway so to keep its balance you're gonna want to have the hips pointing at a 45 degree angle outward now onto the backpack this beak binder does move a little bit up and down over here on the side without the high new in front you can go all the way to the front a little bit to the right uh, these docks for the fin funnels do move left and right depending on which plane you're looking at left and right see and over here these big fuel thrusters do move up and down it's on a hinge instead of a ball joint like the sinanju or the sazabi verka this um, Oh, there it goes. The bell thrusters on the backpack do move a little bit, but not too much. Now let's move on to the high new Verica's gimmicks over here by the left arm. Pop that armor piece out. It does reveal a beam saber hidden on there. And on the other side, pull on this armor piece and pull this up. A Gatling gun is hidden in there. And over here, if you can see in the middle, can pop a... Uh, beam saber in there and if you have little tweezers or pointy tweezers I should say the cockpit does open up so, and then you pull this armor piece out it says on the manual you have to pull on it and then push it up uh, here I just pretty much push it up because pull it anyways here reveals a tiny Amuro pilot fig in there and over by the back skirt you can pop that purple piece out same with that white piece right here to reveal more of the inner parts of the Ainu pretty sure this is where the heavy weapon system connects up next is the calf section so we can pull on that purple piece and just pull these off to the sides and this white portion right there to reveal a thruster underneath over here on the backpack you can push that piece down to reveal the beam saber compartment right there it's pretty hard to get out so i just keep one beam saber out all right now to the 
shoulder section. Pull this white piece down and then the outer portion a little bit out and pull that one upward and then this piece over onto the back as well and you can see the white portions do swivel a little bit up and down and here's a side profile of it with the side hatches open and it's pretty nice that you get to see that little exhaust up on the top this shoulder portion is also where the heavy weapon system connects and over here by the foot this front piece does go down and it's supposed to be how it latches on to debris and over here on the back as well i can't get that one out so i'll move on to the other foot right there see if i can get it out again i did have it out all right there you go last but not least is the led gimmick on this guy i did use a magnetic led but still pretty weak i don't know why but here it is up close you can see you put a little blue led on there now it's kind of the same with the new gundam for a car where you have to pop the back to get to the LED uh, section of it, get it off. One hour later. All right, now uh, that's off. That is how it would look like. Uh, you stick the Bandai LED under there. But uh, yeah, manual says to use a green one. I use the blue one. You can use whatever color you want. The Cosmos LED for this guy does come with green. Now on to the weapons and accessories for this guy. First up is the bazooka that comes with the handle does swivel up and down, does come with a peg. The outer barrel does extend outwards and it doesn't run into a problem like the new Gundam Vraka does which is pretty loose. This one is pretty tight, you can see me having a problem with it pushing it back in. Uh, it does come with uh, foil stickers for the sensors. All of the gunmetal parts are like gray out of box and for you to store it on the backpack, it's over here. Just stick that to the back, unlike the new Gundam where you store it from over here. So you just push it on there and it's just supposed to rest on that little uh, hinge. It's not supposed to click or anything like that, so I don't know kind of iffy if you move it around a bit so just be careful up next is the high beam rifle so it's pretty simple uh, all those gun metal parts are a light gray out of box as well and I just liberate painting them and over here that silver part is also a light gray out of box see I painted those uh, tubes red and copper and the handle does have a little flip out peg so that you could stick it onto the hand and it'll hold it no problems. Another great detail is over here by the sides you can see the inner part of the beam rifle sticking out. And here he is holding on to the high beam rifle. The wrists are pretty weak but you can mitigate that by installing a copper rod in there. Up next is the beam saber effect. It comes in here blue plastic. And it comes with another pair, so you get two of these guys. And what's your beam saber effects without your beam saber hilts? Now, it does have that little uh, fold out peg that this kit comes with, so it sticks in the hand. And then if you do stick the beam saber effects on this guy, it's pretty loose. You can also stick the beam saber effects on the forearms for you to go and get that beam tonfa effect. But the one with the Gatling gun is pretty loose while the other one is pretty tight but the beam saber is trying to go out. Up next is the shield. It's the same one as the new Gundams. Uh, there are some mold issues with mine but you can probably just sand that down and then paint it again. So on the back side it's pretty bare bones but I did paint the light gray parts, uh, gunmetal and uh, metallic gray. The missiles were also a light gray but I just painted it uh, with Gundam Marker EX metallic red. Once the shield is mounted on the forearm, it can move around quite a bit so that it doesn't get in the way of your action poses and you can pose it which way, whatever you want. 
and this kit comes with a stand that's the same as the new Gundams. So you got that nice big A for Amuro right there. Now one major difference from the new Gundam is that the stand uh, now comes with a tiny piece at the end so that the high new can stand up. So the high new does come with that uh, little piece of gray plastic which you just insert into the back of the high new instead of like jimmying it around like the new Gundam. Also be careful with the connectors for the new and the high new. Uh, these two tiny pieces of plastic inside the rings actually snap off. Uh, quite easily so instead of uh, adjusting it uh, just find the right angle for you to pose the new or the high new the high new also comes with a 1100 Amuro fig uh, I painted mine but it does come unpainted uh, it's the same one as the new Gundams and of course you do get your fin funnel connectors it comes with six of these one uh, three for each side I should say and what would be your fin funnel connectors without the fin funnels now one of the downsides of these is the water slides that go on here so i already used uh, delta decals for mine uh, that's why it doesn't look so much shittier than it should be so you connect your fin funnel connectors to the back of the fin funnels and then you insert it behind the high new Gundam's uh, stand and once that's done you can just display him with the fin funnels either deployed or not now he's supposed to be on the air but you know just for showing you guys here he is another difference from the new Gundam's fin funnels is that there is none of that uh, alligator uh, type connectors towards the sides it's all gone as you can see here now it connects to the docks by uh, just slotting them in as you can see here it's pretty easy and once it's in there uh, it's not really coming off and i know it's backwards so let me just and it is on there pretty tight there's been times where i disconnected it and the entire dock has come with a fin funnel so that's pretty awesome uh, it's not really going anywhere so that's a plus and now time for size comparisons here he is next to the new Gundam now I did remove the new Gundam spin funnels just because they are a little floppy but yeah uh, the new Gundam is also on the uh, open hatch mode I forgot what it's called so he is much taller while the new Gundam is wider and here he is next to the origin grandpa see how much smaller grandpa is next to the high new and with that, the High New does come with its own set of problems, much like the new Gundam Verka. If you don't like challenges, then I can't recommend this kit. Personally, I love it. There is a balance problem, but it's mitigated by that stand. And the thrusters on the back as well can be used as a tripod. The biggest issue are the water slides that go on the fin funnels. Bandai only gave you one for each fin funnel, so once you screw up, there's no do-overs. If you're a Gunpla fan and love a challenge, then this kit's definitely for you. And again, I apologize, it's been a while since I've done this and I am rusty. And with that, I hope you guys found this review quite informative. If not, then I'll just do like a 2.0 of the review after like five years from now if I'm still doing this. I did put the Cosmos LEDs on this kit afterwards. And here are just some videos and pictures from that. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day.